Hi everyone. Hello. Hello. Episode <laughs> Episode thirty nine I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was much more enthusiastic. Um this is our second take, um, ladies and gentlemen at home. Um <laughs> Bria made much more of an effort to sound enthused. Because I always sound I'm really exasperated, like, oh my god. <laughs> I, th- I think that's just, I think it's just American teenager syndrome. I think syndrome. that's just me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm always tired, I always sound like a stoner. <sighs> you think, yeah, again, American teenager syndrome, whereas I'm sort of mid-twenties, middle I'm an adult now, British. excuse you. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa, I'm 20 you? now. You're 20. Yay. Yeah. You didn't miss my birthday. I saw you post on my birthday. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I thought you were 19 still. What a moron. Fuck. <laughs> I thought we were friends. Yeah, I guess not. Anyway. <laughs> I guess we're not friends anymore. Uh oh. I guess not. Whoa, Whoa drama. drama. Me and Greer are sending each other Christmas cards from ac- across the earth. Yeah, <laughs> the way you made that sound was like, it's from across the earth. Like, when you think, like, I was listening to... Yeah, that's because those are the words that I used. Yeah, I was listening to... Oh, miles and miles. I was listening to Louis C.K. the other day, and he was talking about how, like, he doesn't know why people complain about cell phones, because it's literally, like, a computer in your pocket, like, you're walking around with this thing, and it's, like, amazing! Like, cell phones, oh, yeah. even the shittiest cell phone, is, like, amazing! In oh, no, planes. It, 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 I mean, you're flying in a metal tube in the sky. I mean, that's amazing. Oh, it is. I mean, I I always, always make this point about flying. I love flying, and I don't get why people are so kind of irritated by it. Like, it's such a chore. It's amazing. Yeah. I don't know. I have no attention span to just sitting somewhere like that for several hours. Just like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I can definitely, I can see that side of it, but... You're flying. You're in the air. That's incredible. Like, and I always make sure I get a window seat. And like, and I, I'm one of those people. Like, I'm like a child. I love everything about it. I love the movies. I love the food. I, and it's all crap, but I love it. <laughs> like, if, like, if you go back in time and you, and you told the Wright brothers like what planes are gonna be like, you know, however many years from now, when were planes invented? I don't. know. When did they do their plane stuff? Like the third, not like it wasn't the, the early 1900s. Yeah, it was something I... like that. Like if you had gone and told them, like in a hundred years, like planes are gonna be in the sky all the time, like hundreds of planes, thousands of planes are gonna be in the sky all at one time, and it just it, makes you don't tell they me. Would say, I knew it, yeah. brother. <laughs> they're gonna be taking hundreds of people at a time everywhere in the world. Like if you had gone and told them that. <laughs> They would have been, like, floored or wouldn't believe you. But then, like, you have people who are like, I have to wait 15 minutes in layovers. Flying sucks. Or, like... (laughs) Again, like, I do... I I get it. I get that thing of it, it being boring if you have to do it all the time. But I suppose I do it... I... I do... I do it so little that it is still, for me, a genuine thrill. I've, and not... I've still never flown an airline. I've never flown an airline. What does that mean, you've never flown I've an airline? I've never gone on, like, a plane, really. You've never gone really? on a plane? I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, my, my dad used to fly, like, little planes. He has a pilot's license. He doesn't fly anymore, <laughs> but, um, like, I think one time he took me, you know, in a, like, a little plane for, like, a few minutes like as a part of like a tour or something and then Aww. I went in a helicopter once but it was like both times I was like really little and I don't remember so that's really cool it's, it's rarer to be in a helicopter than a plane yeah but like I've never flown like on an airline or anything like that oh well there's a first time for everything you've got to come and visit me and Georgia you need to come to England again I'll, I'll go on helicopter <laughs> <laughs> do it be awesome you go, you go on a helicopter and you go on a commercial airline and you can race. <laughs> the amazing race. Yeah, the amazing yeah. race around the world in, what is it, 80 days? Yeah. That's well, a movie with Jackie Chan race. in it. It is, yeah. It was a book first, wasn't it? Yeah. And a bunch oh, of other... Oh my god. I have to tell this. Yesterday, I went to the store and I saw something... It was 99 cents. It was buy one, get one free. And I'm like, I have to get these for me and my brother. 
It was fucking Shaq Soda. Shaq oh, I've heard about that. has a line of sodas produced by the Arizona Tea Company. I thought they were energy drinks. They're like a like... soda. It's like a soda, but it, they have like a weird aftertaste, and I think it's because like, I don't know why. But anyway, <laughs> they're like... I got, like, an orange cream, and I got my brother a strawberry, and we drank him at the same time, and we're like, this is surprisingly pleasant. <laughs> really? Oh, Pretty gosh. good. Pretty damn good. Now, this is one of those American things that is completely meaningless to me, so... Maybe. <laughs> Do you know who Shaq is? No. Do you know who Shaqu- Shaquille O'Neal? You know who Shaq is? Jeez. Shaquille O'Neal, no. He no, used to be... I will post up the best picture I know of Shaquille O'Neal right now. Um, Shaquille O'Neal used to be like the greatest basketball player in the country. He played. He's for, like a mo- he's like a giant. He's like eight feet tall. He's he is a giant. Like he's a literal giant. He's the very only tall. basketball player I know is Michael Jordan. He was apparently a giant. Yeah. No, this history. is he makes Michael Jordan look like he makes Michael know, Jordan look like Peter <laughs> Dinklage. <laughs> He, uh, fucking Shaq is, like, he's, like, huge. Like, not just tall, but, like, he's, like, kind of, like, really did buff as well. Did you ever see the Kazam review? Huh? Right? Did you ever, like, if you watch Nostalgia Greg, did you ever see the Kazam review? Or? Yeah, did you watch the Kazam review? Uh, Steel? Or Steel? Like, yeah. Certainly. I, I mean, actually, one thing I remember is occasionally I hear in American TV shows a reference to Shaq Attack. Shaq Attack, Yeah. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> That's Shaq. Okay, so he used to play basketball, but then he retired. I forgot who, who he played for. I don't know sports. I think he played for, like, the Lakers or some shit. Uh, yeah, he played for the L- L.A. Lakers um, once, and that was, like, apparently when he was in his prime. But then he retired, and then he did, like, he had, like, a short little acting career, and he was a really shitty actor. And then, it was- but then, <laughs> like, nowadays, he just does, like, promotional stuff and commercials <laughs> Yeah, like he, that's, that's I think he does car commercials. He does gold bond commercials. And oh. now, but he's like super likable. I think he has like a doctorate or something now. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. My parents didn't believe that when I told them that. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Shaq has like a doctorate. <laughs> and they're doctorate. like, you're lying. That's a lie. <laughs> See, D-list celebrities in our country, they don't go and get doctorates. They usually come out of the closet under nefarious circumstances and then die. Yeah. <laughs> See, he's, like, not even D-list. Like, he's super, he was super well-known in, like, the 90s, and uh, then he did shitty movies, and now he does commercials and every and just, he's always been just, like, this really likable guy. So, people like him a lot. Actually, we well, did you step on them. Yeah, he just steps on people all the time. <laughs> we do have an equivalent to him, actually. Um, a guy called Gary Lineker, a football player, a retired football player, who's he's never been booked. Um, and by booked, I mean he's never had a yellow card or a red card. He's never been sent off. So he's a completely wow. like straight down the line guy, and he, like a national treasure. Everyone loves him. Um, and he now is a co-presenter on something called Match of the Day, which is like again a national institution. It's a football program. Mm-hmm. Um, but he presents an advert for crisps or as you would call them chips um and he's like he's famous for these adverts he's been appearing in them since like the mid 90s and yeah that again it like a national treasure um so i suppose he would be our equivalent to shack and just a really really likable guy yeah i like shack (laughs) a lot of people (laughs) make fun of him because he like had he doesn't talk like any other person I've ever seen, like, speak. Just the way okay. he, like, speaks. He kind of speaks very slowly. Um, he's a big guy, but he's not the smartest guy. Yeah, so. even though he has a doctorate, but he's... People... Well, they probably gave it to him because he would step on them. Yeah. <laughs> people kind of had this stereotype <laughs> doctor, about him. I will teach you. People had this stereotype about him for a long time that he wasn't very smart because he spoke very slowly. Um, and he still speaks like that. So, he just has this strange way of talking that I've never heard another person talk like that. It's like... <laughs> uh, yeah, a bit like William Shatner. Uh, no, because Shaquille O'Neal is large and black, and Shatner is, like, small, white, and fat. So... <laughs> no, I... I, 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 I don't Shatner, he's powerful. And he's dramatic. Yeah. Shaq's just slow, you know. Uh, 
Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, more more just in the sense that they're both they both have, I suppose, unusual speech patterns. Yeah. I actually yeah. I actually just finished reading a uh, George Takei's uh, autobiography that he wrote back oh, in the so I need to read that. The that, that is, it's called yeah. To the Stars, and he reels on Shatner so hard. Really? What does he say? Wait, who reels on Shatner? Uh, George Takei. Oh wow. They apparently well, is kind of a dick. <laughs> Your dog is barking, bro. Yeah, no, that's that's me freaking out. <laughs> uh, I'd love to see that with no, you barking. They like, make you happy. they like hate each other. <laughs> Seriously? Because what? apparently, like, and he has all these stories about William Shatner, how like when Star Trek was canceled the first time, like, like Shatner didn't really like give a shit, and like he never really was like. He was never really connected to the, you know, productions he was a part of, allegedly, and, you know, he, he was kind of like, uh, according to George Takei, he would, like, go up to, you know, the directors and the cameramen and make it so there were more close-up shots of him. Oh, and yeah. I heard he was apparently, like, this huge yeah. egomaniac, and... <laughs> And I don't know, I mean, I don't know, you know, if he's, like, you know, addressed it or, you know, changed since... I could see that happening, but, you you know, I could could see that being true, but then again, you know, it's one person's word against someone else's, so... I know. I mean, it's funny, like, I am more inclined to... Because, one, I've heard zillions of stories like this about William Shatner. They're kind of, like, they're very well known at this point, and I'm more inclined to believe George Takei just because he is... So, I mean, he's likable. Yeah, he's <laughs> likable, and it's an interesting thing because when you when you get a really really likable celebrity like that, like it's almost like the way I defend Ricky Gervais, despite the fact that he's done and said some undeniably cunty things oh, in yeah. the past. <laughs> like, I'll defend him because I like him. Uh-huh. Do you do you have do you have an equivalent of that either of you? Do you have anyone that like you? Any any famous person that you would forgive in a way that you wouldn't another? Oh, uh, shit. I gotta think about that. Well, that, I don't know. I mean, a lot of celebrities already have that. A lot of celebrities have done douchey or really bad, horrible things, and yet people forgive them. Yeah. I don't know. It all depends. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's gone back years and years. I mean, it's like James Franco. Like, James Franco has done a lot of really altruistic things, but... I still think he's a cunt. <laughs> I know. Why do you hate him so much? You hate him mindlessly so much. <laughs> no, just, what did he ever do to I you? I love it. He he just annoys me. He, he, I I genuinely find him. Did you watch? The- did you watch? This is the end. No, I haven't seen you it. You really, yet. you'd really like it, even though he's I- in it. <laughs> uh-huh. I I don't even mind him as an actor. I just think as a person, he is one of the most irritating celebrities well, he, pla- he plays himself in the movie all the actors in the movie play themselves and he kind of plays this like uppity kind of actor and yep, very yeah, full yep. of himself but it, yep. it, in the movie like all the actors are like self-aware like like jonah hill is just like this really sweet kind person and seth rogan's always talking about smoking pot and Danny McBride is really vulgar. <laughs> I really, I really, really like um, uh, Jonah Hill. Yeah, in the movie, he's like really like he's like, oh guys, you know, <laughs> it's really but sweet. I, like, Jonah I'm Hill. not crazy about Jonah Hill, and I feel like I'm the only one who. Didn't. Jonah Hill seems like someone to me. Like he's done some crappy stuff, but I feel like. Anything crappy he does, he kind of saves just because he's very, very yeah, charming. that's how I feel about Zach Galifianakis. Like, he's been in some shitty movies, but I love him so much. Zach Galifianakis is kind of a douchebag. <laughs> I don't even care. I love Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> what, no, I what? mean, like, some of his stuff is funny, but, like, I don't know, I've heard some things he said. He's kind of a dick sometimes. What's he, what have you heard? What was it, like, this one time, like, I don't know, uh, like, a fan was talking to him. And, like, you know, he made, like, a the fan made, like, a hangover joke, and, of course, that, like, pissed him off. And oh. then, like, he, he told him something back, and, like, I forget what it was. And it was it was kind of funny, but at the same time, it's, like, that's a little I mean, he harsh. probably gets hangover shit quoted to him, like, 24 I know, but I By really... dumb 14-year-olds who... But I, I, 
I'm more willing to forgive a 14-year-old for being kind of an idiot than a multi-millionaire actor. I kind of think, and, and an adult multi-millionaire actor. I also actor. appreciate him because he doesn't even, like, live in Hollywood. He lives in, like, North Carolina or some shit on, like, a farm. Do you know, do you know what? Like, I kind of feel this way, and I... I kind of feel this way about Britney Spears. Like, fair play to her. She still lives in her hometown. Like, that's kind of cool. I, love I think. Her. That well, will that's always because Britney she Spears. Would she go crazy again. Okay, that's my answer. But Britney Spears that's... can like kill somebody, and I would still love her. Like, she could like. <laughs> I think people were. Jesus. I think I heard somebody talk about this the other day. Like, people in and Beyonce. Beyonce just broke a bunch of records because she released an album. Uh, that sold. Oh my god, my sister's been like freaking out. Four hundred thousand copies of this album sold in twenty four hours. Supposedly, it's brilliant. Yeah, I haven't listened to it yet, but I think the only reason is because you can't buy the tracks on the album individually, so that's a little weird. Uh, but and people are saying like, oh, she sold more than Katy Perry and Gaga, and I'm like, well, because all those tracks you can buy individually. I don't think. Because I looked, and you can't buy the tracks on that album individually. You can only buy the whole album. So that's probably why. Good business move. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I know know what you mean. It it does seem like a marketing ploy, but I would really like to believe that it's... Uh, but because she released it with no fanfare, I'd like to believe that it is an artistic choice. It, that yeah, she does. I think it is too. But anyway, so people were talking and I, I read this tweet and it said like, Beyonce could literally do anything and people would still love her. She could take Blue Ivy and throw her in the ocean and try to drown her. And her fans would be like, yes, bitch, <laughs> kill that little bitch. Yeah. Blue, Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy is Beyonce's child. Oh, right. Her little baby. So she could literally throw her own child into the Atlantic and drown her and people would still love yes, her. Yes, drown that well, little You know what? I would believe that because people are fucking crazy and stupid. So I would believe that. They'd probably start drowning their own babies and call it like, <laughs> they'd be like, oh my God, it's so much better than planking. <laughs> drown they'd give children. it a name too. No, I mean, I, I, know, I, know, I know what you mean. I mean, like, I... Like, obviously, there are things that I won't defend. But then again, like, me loving a celebrity, like, that has no effect. Like, I know that I can carry on loving Ricky Gervais with absolutely no integrity, and it won't do any harm. So I do. I I hate that, you know, because I'm a huge fan of someone like Lady Gaga, and so much crap just gets told about her that is not true at all, and people will just blindly believe it. And I'm like... You're dumb. <laughs> this is not true at all. <laughs> well, I mean, there was one, because that, that kind of thing always happens. Like, there was one really absurd thing about Marilyn Manson having his, I think, rib removed so that he could suck his own cock, which is just idiotic. I love Marilyn Manson. That makes sense. No, it, it makes sense. That's, that's another celebrity that can do anything and I'd still love. I love Marilyn Manson. I love Mar- Marilyn Manson is a big part of my childhood. <laughs> I really like him. Same. And he seems like a actually an intelligent man, yeah. like which always everyone was awesome. giving him shit when he was on the Talking Dead, and he was like spout a bunch of shit he didn't know about, and everyone was giving him shit. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> he was you probably drunk. I don't care. For like five minutes. Huh? Did you guys know that? Hmm. He was on Once Upon a Time for like one episode or two. I heard he about really? that. Yeah. Uh, he I'm was not- uh, yeah. He was Peter Pan's shadow, and like they were sort oh, of building- wow, that's perfect. And they were sort of building it up, but, like, he, he barely said anything. He had, like, a few lines in an episode, and that was it. Well, he has, like, a I really know. strong, like, physical appearance, so... Yeah, I was just thinking that, like... It wasn't that a voiceover thing. thing. It, wasn't, it wasn't physical. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Hmm. See, that, that seems like kind of a missed opportunity. I feel like yeah. if they're going to have this Peter Pan shadow, you want to see him. He has such, like, a look about him, you know? Yeah. And, Exactly. Like, even his silhouette, if you saw that silhouette, that would be great kind of imagery, I think. Yeah. I, I've never seen Once Upon a Time, but I really want to. I mean, the idea itself looks interesting, but... Uh, I, wa- I wish you guys had seen it, because I want to babble about the season finale. Ugh. I won't... Okay, I, I'm babbling. Once Upon a Time spoilers. I am okay, so on, pissed. George, I'm gonna... I need, to, I need to go and make myself a cup of tea, so this is fine. You go ahead. <laughs> Well, fly me! You have to hear my babbling that we have to wait. Go over, ahead, go ahead, spout it. For two fucking months, 
for the net for the season to start back up. Two months. Who the hell does that? Lots of shows do that. No, they don't. Oh. Do they really wait two months? Do they really wait till March to start back up? Hang on, sorry, I have to interject here. Um, Community, it was a year a year since they, or just under a year since they premiered their fourth season, and we're only just getting season five. Oh my I have to wait so goddamn long. Apparently, That's like, awesome. apparently, like, how long did Sherlock take to come out? Like, oh, fucking we... Sherlock, Sherlock, God damn it! <laughs> and we get like three, we get three ninety-minute episodes a season, which amounts to roughly about nine, the equivalent of nine half-an-hour episodes. But to have to wait two years for that—that's just shameful. Fran, I'm not like though. Like, I'm once upon a time, it's. I just feel like they're essentially like it's a cliffhanger, you know, season finale, obviously. But like they're pre- they're basically doing the same story they already did. Like the first season is like ever all the characters have amnesia and they have to like you know be reminded that they they used to be fairy tale characters. And now they're kind of doing that again, but like in a different perspective. But it's still like the amnesia angle. And I'm just like, you guys did this already. Like, a really long season. You really have to do it again. Mm. It's gonna be really repetitive. But I'm still gonna watch it anyway. But I mean, I, I know suppose... one. I I am a. They, oh, ki- they killed off like uh, one of their more popular characters, and um, I have a friend on Facebook who's like, I guess she's behind because I've been seeing her post about like older episodes, and she's like in love with this character. And so I just watched this episode, and I'm thinking, oh, she's gonna be crushed. When this happens, but I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna tell her. Like, I mean, the deaths of the deaths of fictional characters hit me very hard, so I'm I'm right there with her. Yeah. I but I mean I I, uh, I think it's interesting what you said about um Once Upon a Time because that could be considered like how long has uh, how long has Once Upon a Time been running? I don't know. I got into it later. A couple of years um, now, I think. What what I think season? It's on its third. This is the third season, so. I suppose. And each season is really long, too. Well, that, I guess, then, could be considered the what you were saying about them redoing the an- amnesia storyline, but from a different perspective. Like, I guess that could be kind of considered a repilot, like taking something from the original kind of core of the show, but putting a different spin on it. And I think it can either work in a show's favour or it can work against it. Like, for Scrubs, it killed the show but they're doing it with community and i'm really really interested to see what's like so far it looks very positive i think sometimes a show going back to its roots rather than becoming too kind of convoluted can be a good thing Mm. yeah it can be i don't know i mean i felt like they had other i don't know i feel like they maybe could have done something else besides the amnesia thing like i don't i don't know what but they could have done something different like they were probably I don't, like, the first season was just meeting all the different characters, because there's so many, and, like, you know, learning that how each of them is a fairy tale character, and, um, you know, there's which story, and how they're, you know, what they're like, blah, 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 and I don't know, I don't think they've done every single story yet, so, like, it would have been cool if they kept doing that, but I yeah, think they're, I think they're gonna keep doing that, because, like, they, um, they had, like, a, you know, when the season comes back, we're gonna show all this cool stuff. And they sort of hinted at, like, you saw it for, like, a split second that, like, Elpha Ball might be there or something. Oh, cool. Because you see this lady all green. I'm like, oh, okay. Idea. I mean, hopefully they'll, I mean, I'm not a fan of Wicked, so hopefully they'll re, they'll kind of repair some of the damage. That oh, that... yeah, like, each, all the characters are, like, not really how you know them. Like, like, uh, like I just, like, uh, I was saying Peter Pan's channel, like, Peter Pan was the bad guy. Oh, really? Oh, that's oh yeah, he was this sinister little punk kid. I keep seeing well, pictures of that Captain Hook, and he's really, really fine. Oh, my God. He is really so fine. Do you know who I... He's I mean, I, I, think Captain, I think Captain Hook's really fine. I really like Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook. I think he is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking okay. about that. I forget the guy's name. It's like Colin O'Donoghue. It's something really Irish. But he's, like, really hot, and I can't handle it. <laughs> Captain he's just always in like this black leather coat, and he's really gorgeous and uh, ovaries. 
It's uh, not fair. He has guy liner. <laughs> I'm a sucker for guy liner, I have to say. I know! And, like, it doesn't even make sense, because it's like, he's a pirate, and there's no such thing as guy liner, but, I don't know, he, he pulls it off. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, pirates are hot. Maybe it's, like, coal or something. But, yeah, pirates are hot. <laughs> yeah, like, That's why I can't wait for it. That's why I'm the only person excited for Pirates of the Caribbean 5. <laughs> Oh, they're oh, making another one? Yeah. Damn it. Are you serious? That's, I'm the only person excited. <laughs> I can't hate those films. I think I talked about it with Welshie when he was here. But I just yeah. cannot hate those movies. And he says he like he disagrees with Matthew Buck about, you know, the Pirates films and Matthew Buck doesn't like them. And, uh, well, I'm, I'm not entirely okay with anyone disagreeing with Matthew, so... <laughs> respectfully withdraw from this conversation um <laughs> fucking all the tv shows are ending agents of shield just had their um i think it's no. not even their season finale it was their mid-season finale <laughs> oh yeah the mid-season thing for the holidays i think that's what everyone's doing like oh America's god they left it off at such a terrible place <laughs> Oh, and then when we come back, we're gonna know what happened in Tahiti. I know. Oh no! Hang on. There's a really great animation, um, w- which gives a possibility that what happened in Tahiti with just Agent Coulson and like Captain America in a banana hammock washing his car. <laughs> Ew. Yes. That's not what happened. That's what happened. I love. <sighs> Head cannon. Head I could not even deal with that episode. Like that was. It was one of the better episodes that they've done. Yeah, that was really was intense. Really that's good. Really they brought awesome. back a lot of stuff and, yeah. you know, expanded on people. And I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> I, need to, I need to give Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a proper go because I watched the pilot and I liked it. And then I watched the second episode and it was just like, you're doing nothing to expand these characters. I'm out. It, 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 it takes uh, a while to get character development for anyone. It really does. Like, they stay characters <coughs> for a while. And they, I think they probably will throughout the show. I mean, I mean, I mean, in each way, everyone's gotten character development, even though not an, an, a, a big amount. Like, each, each character yeah, really has their own episode. Like, Agent May has an episode, and Fitz and Simmons have an episode, and... Stuff like that. That really expands on them and things like that. Like, I mean, I feel like a lot of what it started with were, I don't know, a lot of Joss Whedon tropes. Like, mm-hmm. having, having two characters that are kind of quirky, one called Fitz, one called Simmons, people referring to them as Fitz. Like, that is that is so Joss Whedon. And They're I felt, all quirky. Like that's- I'm the only one. I feel like I'm the only person that likes lights fit simmons i love them so much i mean i feel like they'll grow on me but it's just it's not it just... that bad it's the it's the guy that's really annoying no he's cute he's it adorable is. he's adorable i love i mean i yeah i didn't find them annoying it was just the fact that they were they were just very very joss whedon i mean and i think i've talked about this before i mean sky and award i mean they really got on my nerves early on because they were just bland as fuck but then sky is actually getting like some emotional development she's still annoying (laughs) yeah i mean yeah because every like every other piece of dialogue she has is a snarky comeback and i feel like that's that's kind of a whedon thing too isn't it yeah, it's I, I don't know. It's I, I really snarky episode. dialogue. Like, she's snark all the time. They're I mean, she's about... like a real person at all. <laughs> That's the thing. None of them really feel like people, except Coulson and probably Agent May, but none of them really feel like people to me, and that's, I think that's what bothered me. At yeah, first Agent, May, Agent May feels very, like, robotic to me, but I feel like it's justified because of the, they do an episode where supposedly, like, this is a bunch of shit that she's gone through, and, you know, she's been in this thing for, like, a, a while. And I'm like, oh, I can see now why she's kind of, like, a bitch. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, justified bitchiness, I think. Um, You've been through a lot. <laughs> uh, I mean, Fitz and Simmons have an episode that kind of show them as, like, really real people. And they have a, they have a character that comes back from the, from the first episode. And he is very, like, I really like him. Um, yeah, he's a good guy. Is that the guy, Grit? Is that the guy who... Oh, what was it? He... He gets superpowers. The guy with the sun. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. He comes back it, in, in the mid-season finale. See, he was great. Yeah, but, he comes back, so, I mean, and he's awesome. But is it not weird to you that they didn't utilize him earlier on? I mean, well, because they, a- they explain, like, where he's been and stuff like that, and... Okay, so. but, but still, like, he was a great character. He was one of the best characters in the pilot. Why not? have him carry on in the show throughout the entire season, right? Yeah, I mean, again, they bring him back and they explain, like, where he's been and what he's been doing, which is pretty much justified. They're like, he's been training to try to, uh, like, stabilize his power and stuff like that, because he's essentially a super soldier now, because he has the super soldier yeah. shit in him. But, if, but now he's not the only one. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. I mean, and I, yeah. I'm slowly, like, seeing, like, like Ward, I mean, become kind of more human, you know, thanks to Coulson and stuff like that, and Is it's it? getting better, it's getting better. I feel like at this point, like, it's getting better. I, no, it is, I agree. Yeah. It starts off, it started off really rocky, and I'm like, oh my god, when are these people gonna get development? And then they start getting development, and I'm like, yay. Yay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Can I ask, by the way, this is a really shallow question, but is it established now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Coulson is not gay? I, they don't explain... He talks about the cellist again. He's not gay. He's not. A bit, or maybe, maybe for Captain America, but that's it. He's a fanboy <laughs> for Captain America. But you know what really annoys me is, okay, Joss Whedon is a real, like... He's he's very very pro gay, which is great. But he's written one he's written one gay character, one prominent gay character, as far as I'm aware, in all his shows, which is Willow. And actually, it would have been much more realistic to make Willow bisexual because she had really strong feelings for Xander. She had really strong feelings for Oz. So it was the fact that one he kind of missed a trick there by not doing some cool bisexual visibility stuff, which is really important. But then he went on to not really write any more prominent gay characters. And he's had so many shows. And I just feel like Coulson being gay would have been great. Well, number one, they would have to, then they would have to kind of change, you know, the way he's been portrayed in the comic books and stuff like that. And number two, he's already an established character in a bunch of franchises. But what would they? What I feel like him throwing in something like that would kind of just be like, "Here's the thing for the LGBT people." Like that would just be like, but, it would just, it would just on. feel really shallow. I mean, if they did something like that. Totally, I totally disagree with you. What would they have to change first of all? I, I feel like because they're like, I know there would be people who were like, "Oh, he's not gay enough. He's not gay enough." Da da da. Because there's so many. I had this epiphany, I think, where I, I saw some people complaining about how there aren't any how there aren't a whole bunch of trans characters in media, like transgender, mm. transsexual, what trans, yeah. what the fuck ever. And, um, and I'm sa- I'm thinking like, maybe like, and I posted this and I'm said, maybe these writers of whatever are like, because this world is so PC and full of people that will call you out on the smallest wrong thing about transgender people or gay people or whatever. I, I feel like maybe the writers are scared to write these people because, A, they're not sure how without offending anybody or upsetting anybody, or B, well, that's the only point. They're afraid of, you yeah. know, writing something that they I think don't you're right. That's know probably exactly what it is. a whole bunch about in fear yeah. of offending or upsetting people. See, and I people will get upset about anything. You can get something completely correct, and people will still get upset. See, I, I, know, <laughs> I, know what you're, I know what you're saying. I can see your point. But to me, it seems much more likely, based on, you know, based on the evidence just in terms of, you know, backlash, things like the Parents Television Council, um, like networks losing sponsorship, various things like that that they are, they're much more afraid, and this sounds really cynical, but they're much more afraid of the people in power mm-hmm. that are going to give them a hard time. And I, 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 you, both, you both make really good points. If, if you take, like, if there was, like, a show, let's let's make a hypothetical show, 
okay. Uh, with a hypothetical writer and a hypothetical everything. Say this writer doesn't really know anything about transgender people. Or not much, and, you know, he's done some internet research or whatever, but he doesn't really know any, and he wants to write one in to make people, you know, you know, it's just like, here's something for the equality people. And you put it in, but it's, like, you know, offensive. I would rather have a character, you know, you know, a transgender character not be written in at all than have one, and it just being super offensive or dumb or uneducated stereotypes. What I would rather, Greer, is that these people, they did they did write transgender characters or bisexual characters or gay characters. They did their research. The impetus on them is to get informed yeah. and then to, you know, create visibility. I feel like that's their responsibility. I feel like even when, they, when people do do their research, I feel like there are still people that get offended because it's like, well, you don't know any transgender people. That means you're transphobic, or you know, what, social justice warriors on Tumblr will get fucking pissed off at anything. You can't please all the people all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree, and I kind of feel like if they're scared of that. Well, too bad. You know, it's still, <laughs> it, it's a. It, there are worse jobs. They're not working down a mine. You know, yeah. If people get pissed off at them on Tumblr, they might be irritated, but. If you know, if you're worried about people irritating you and not liking your show anymore, and that's why you're choosing not to write transgender characters, I, I don't know. I just I I or gay characters or bisexual characters. Like my sympathies are limited. I just feel like you know, if that is the reason that you know the writers are like, well, I don't know enough about this topic, so I don't want to write about it, and then have people get upset. I feel like, I mean, I feel that that's that's justified. But I, like, I mean, I guess, but, like, if you, you know, what's what's to stop you from researching a little? Yeah, yeah. The or that. talking to transgender people, Yeah, you know? I mean, if people did that, but if it's, like, I'm in a rush, I need to throw something in, but I'm not going to throw this in because I don't know a whole lot about the topic. That's, like, me. Well, yeah, obviously. That's, like, me going to do a lecture on, like, Doctor Who. Something I know nothing about. <laughs> if I were to write a Doctor Who joke and... It'd be like, well, you don't know anything about Doctor Who. And I'm like, exactly. I don't know anything about Doctor Who. But, uh, but I, again, I mean I, feel, I mean, I know what you're saying. I feel like if a network is breathing down your neck to touch this demographic, this demographic, and this demographic, then, yeah, of course, yeah. you're not going to want to do that for the sake of it. But I feel like, okay, for instance, with Coulson, there were there was some really genuinely, like beyond all just the fangirl, fanboy stuff, there was some genuinely positive feedback to the thought that the character might be gay. Loads. People loved it. People loved the idea of this kick-ass agent being gay. They wouldn't have to change the fact that he was kick-ass. They wouldn't have to change the fact that, you know, he he was, you know, masculine in a lot of ways. I don't see him as gay. Like, where did that come from? Was it the Captain America thing? Yeah, it was the Captain America thing. People really people really liked the idea that he might have a crush on Captain well, he America. He's already talked in the show about like hooking up with women and shit, so well, okay, uh, but just to say he talked a lot about that in the last episode. <laughs> yeah, but maybe, maybe someday he'll make a, maybe someday Captain America will make a cameo. I don't Hey, you know what? For all we know, maybe uh Colson's bi. Maybe they could write that. Well, yeah, exactly. Why the hell? Maybe Colson's asexual. Maybe Colson's an octopus. I don't know. <laughs> he hides it very well if he's an octopus. <laughs> but why is it? Why is it like? Why is it wrong to? Or not wrong, but why? Why is speculating on that a waste of time? Because it's a fictional character. Yeah. But, but no, but I I dis I disagree. I think visibility is really important. I mean, look at us. We're a bunch of young people who are really passionate about popular culture. I know both me and Greer are bisexual, and it would be great to have some real visibility, some real role models in popular culture. No, you're right. And you know what? This is the 21st century, and maybe that'll happen someday. I mean, I really hell, there's... Wasn't there a show, The L Word? Like, you know. Yeah. I mean, there are like lots that. of shows with, you know, people just aren't seeing them. That's the thing. It's like, people are complaining about all these shows, but they're on, you know, basic cable channels. And I'm like, go watch Showtime. Go watch HBO. There are tons of characters like that, but you just aren't seeing them. Go watch RuPaul's Drag Race. RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. Yeah. 
I mean, you're, you know, that is a really, really good point, Greer. Like, Logo is a fucking channel dedicated to fucking shows with gay characters in it. Logo oh, wow. is like, uh, like uh, their demographic is LGBT people. That's yeah. their demographic. That entire I channel. Can't wait for the next season of Drag Race, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I I do I actually love I love Drag Race. I fucking adore it. Oh my God. But um, <laughs> we I, uh, can all get together and watch it. It'll be fun. I do love me should, too. Should, that'd be so easy. Let's do it tomorrow. I'll just get my socks on. <laughs> oh yeah, aunties. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We'll be throwing shade everywhere. I, uh, I'll, I'll take shade. <laughs> I guess I just think it would be nice as well, actually, if, like, because, I, I mean, you're you're totally, totally right, Grill. Like, you can seek these things out, like, and that with the internet is a completely simple thing to do. But it'd be nice if there was a show or there were more shows where gay and straight characters integrated and it wasn't an issue, it wasn't a focal point. They just happened to be gay. Well, it can happen. You just, you know, maybe you can make one. I should. Why don't you make I, one? Yeah, why don't you make it? Yeah. <laughs> you don't no, like I, it, fix it. <laughs> no, I mean, you're so I'd, I'd love to, like, and I, I do. The actors call me. Like, That's why people, I, like, when people complain about Obama, and I'm like, you go be president. You try it. You go do it. That's a little different. I think it's easier <laughs> to write a show than be president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, I mean, I know exactly what you mean. Like, again, it is that thing of, like, if if you're not happy with something, if you want social change, then, yeah, don't just bitch about it on Tumblr, make it happen. Like, I do, I do fully get that. Mm. Unless you're gonna go hurt people. Mm. Oh, yeah. Unless yeah. you're, like, a hardcore feminist that's like, I hate men, and you actually go out and, like, beat guys up, and that's not cool. There was a girl, like, I'm not gonna name her here and now, but there was a girl that, like, okay, a bunch of, uh, me and a bunch of my friends, um, we used to go to Edinburgh quite a lot because we had a friend that lived there and we'd go for like the festival or just for like Christmas to visit her and like there's a girl that we know there who instantly hated my cousin because he was a man like entirely based on the fact that he was a man like I I mean that how can you justify that to yourself how Uh, I I don't know that's that's pretty sexist yeah Women can be sexist, too. I am fully, like, I can fully own up to that. I can fully own up to women being sexist. We are we are sexist idiots sometimes. I have uh, been. I'm not even gonna... Than else. I'm not even fucking, you know... Georgia, that... I, it's all right. I can't hear your dog at all anymore. Sorry, my, sorry about that. My dog's been freaking out again. <laughs> no, it's all right. I genuinely can't... I don't think we've... We've never had Elvis on the show, Greer. We've never had your dog. Because my dog's quiet. He doesn't really bark unless he wants to play. You're so no. lucky. My dog never shuts up. Like, this morning, I was just, well, I looked out my bedroom window, and I see this lady, like, this old lady walking across the street, I guess, and he's freaking out. And I'm like, what? He's, he's not doing anything. My, my best friend's dogs do that. They'll bark at, you know, someone riding their bike near the house. No, he's so territorial. He's, yeah. ugh, he's See, my dog isn't territorial because he doesn't have any balls, so. Well, neither does my dog, but he still splits out. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I mean, he freaks out when he thinks he smells a deer. That's about it. <laughs> I, I really, really need to get a pet, honestly. Like, I don't even think I'm allowed them in my flat, but, like, uh, just, like, a hamster or something. Like, I'd fucking love a hamster. You know, Mike, Mike J reviewed that fucking, uh, those, like, the fake parakeet. You should get one of those. Yeah, don't get one of those. That's stupid. <laughs> you should get a fake parakeet. <laughs> it can't be said enough. I love Mike J. I think he is still one of the funniest people yeah. on the site. His, and by the way, this is seasonal themed. His, the origins of Christmas, or it was, or the oranges of, origins of Santa. Or oranges something like of Santa. <laughs> oranges of Santa, yes. The satsumas ah! of Santa. Sorry, pop up, make it go away. Oh, uh, fuck that. <laughs> It was a, sorry, it was a stupid pop up on my computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um <laughs> Mike yeah, Mike J's Origins of Santa video or whatever the fuck is called is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Like I would fully, fully recommend people seeing it. It's like Monty Python funny, like it's genius. Oh, I just still watch infomercialism in shameful sequels. 
Uh, yeah, oh yeah, um, infomercialism. They uh, he's doing. It's like my a favorite because so many of those products are from America, so I I know what they are. I'm like I've seen that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Perspective. He just, um, he just did um, was it the cami secret, which is just like that cloth you put over your boobs to cover them up or something? Oh, was that? Oh, I haven't actually gone to his blip page in a couple days. So I felt kind of bad because like at the end, I'm I'm pretty sure he just uses his girlfriend. He just points like to sample the, the cami secret or whatever, and I'm just like, he didn't even credit her or show her face. He just points at her boobs. Well, maybe she didn't want to. He can't use himself. Well, yeah. Well, I don't I like know. He just gained a little weight. <laughs> that was maybe, harsh. Sorry, maybe, Meg. And maybe he can use himself. He's he he's not a he's not a thin man. <laughs> That was mean. Can you cut that, please? Can you cut that? It's okay. No. <laughs> he can take a joke. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. No, no, I think no. he's lovely. Matthew's fat, and I still love him. <laughs> fat? <laughs> How is no. Matthew fat? He, uh, I'm really digging a hole for myself here. He's just... <laughs> I just watched three projectors last night, by the way. Can, yeah, can can everything I've said in the last 30 seconds please be struck? No. The <laughs> I'm coming across as an, an enormous D. I'm going to and... ruin your life. I'm going to ruin your life. <laughs> please. I'm the best friend. Um, f- yeah, yeah, I watched the projector reviews on Philomena and Walter Mitty and Mr. Banks. I really want to see Philomena. I know I really want to see Walter Mitty. Yeah, Walter Mitty actually looks, like, good, <laughs> which he, is surprising because it's a Ben Stiller me. movie. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Ben Stiller movies used to be good. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I like mean, Ben Stiller. I, I like him. I think he's a funny guy. Yeah. I think it's a remake. I mean, Zoolander's I think, great. Yeah, it's a book as well. Zo- I love Zoolander. Zoolander's I great. I heard something and, crazy about a sequel, still- but I hope not. Oh, I, I wouldn't want that. Hopefully, Me neither. Hopefully, if they do a sequel, it would be as good as the Anchorman sequel promises to be. Yeah. Mm, well, yeah. Have you seen Ron Burgundy going around and doing like actual like new stuff? I wish you would come to my news station. That would be so. I would watch the news. It'd be so yeah. awesome. <laughs> he is a he has a book out right now. Ron Burgundy, not Will Ferrell, but Ron Burgundy has a book. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah. Oh God, what is it called? It's something really stupid. Um, of course. I forget. I'll have to look it up real quick. But um, I'm probably gonna get it for my parents for Christmas because it's really. I want to read that. That sounds hilarious. <laughs> oh my god, it looks really funny. It's I, probably uh, got like a cocktail recipe for like a really good scotch. Yeah. Oh, he, has a, he has a Ben and Jerry's flavor out right now. It's yeah. like scotchy scotch scotch or something like that. My boyfriend <laughs> tried it oh. and um, he let me have some. It's ridiculously sweet. Really. Like, well, yeah, it's just butterscotch. Uh, the, the book is called Let Me Off at the Top, My Classy Life and Other Musings. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to read that right I now. I flipped through it and it was really funny. Like, uh, have either of you read, um, have either of you read Greg Sestero's book about making the room? About the experience? No, but I want to. It's on my to read list. I, I don't want to know. I kind of want to just imagine the insanity of what happened. Oh. I want to know. God damn it, I want to know. There's, you know, you can do on Amazon that read the first, like, five pages or whatever. Like, I did that on Greg Sestero's book, and it just, he sounds insane, Tommy Wiseau. Like, and I know... Like, when Tommy gets back on his spaceship, because that's the only thing I really care about. Does he ever get home, back to whatever planet he came from? (laughs) Amazing. I I I don't believe he's human. Well, I mean, that that is the thing, isn't it? Okay, well, right, logically... Okay, we don't know where he comes from, what country. His accent is entirely undecipherable. <laughs> undecipherable. Um, he he doesn't know our ways. He he has no concept of our human customs. Um, he he's an alien. Yep. I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised. He's from I don't know Krypton or some Doctor Who planet. He's from somewhere I don't know. Gallifrey. Sure, whatever. <laughs> That's a Doctor Who thing. I know that. I kind of know that. Oh, great. Good job. Yay. I know that Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, you get a gold star. <laughs> you good job, Gray. Awesome. High five. Um, what else? Are you guys excited about Christmas? Yeah, I'm upset that you haven't seen Frozen yet. <clears throat> yeah, I'm <laughs> 
Okay, right, Griff. I am upset that I haven't seen Frozen yet. I have been wanting to see Frozen for weeks, but I have... Right, for those of you that don't know, I work in an old people's home, and I'm not afraid to say it. We get paid a pittance. I have no money. Ever. Uh, it's not easy. You have enough to buy teeth. Yeah. That's a conversation killer, isn't it? That was a conversation killer. You know, it's all right. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, just my phone went off for a second, so I got distracted. <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool, dude. That's cool, dude, said the Brit. No, it's nothing. Well, I don't, I mean, everybody's jobs probably don't pay enough. I don't even know how, I probably don't get paid enough either, but that's what because they mean? barely use me. I have, I got hired a month ago. I have been to work twice. What? Yes. I, well, actually, I'll be coming on Saturday, but that'll be my third time. That's a, that's a zero hour contract. I, I actually, it's funny, I had something similar. I had to wait ages and ages and ages after I was hired for them to actually get their acts together and put me into work. Like they told me it was seasonal, but I thought I would at least get something more than that. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do, Georgia? What do you do for a living? Uh, well, right now, I'm a professional bum. <laughs> um, professional? I didn't know you had kids. What? No! I said bum, not mom. Oh, fuck me. Sorry, Georgia. Oh, God, no way. <laughs> I can't have kids now. I don't have a house or a job. That doesn't oh matter. God. I'm trying to imagine you with children. No, it might happen someday. Christ. <laughs> yeah, my little Tom Hiddleston's running around. Oh, shit. All... Would they look like him? <laughs> They would, with those beautiful blue eyes. You would just sneak into Tom's house in the middle of the night, give me your child. <laughs> <laughs> Impregnate that me. That sounds like a home. horror movie. <laughs> right. That would be a great horror movie. Like, some stalker fan sneaking into, like, a famous person's house would be like, give me your seed. <laughs> oh, my God. And then they do end up pregnant with the child. <laughs> just spend their entire lives like she would be tormenting the actor and that's a great horror film Fran you need to make that great okay we'll write it together <laughs> seeing as I did not get off my ass okay guys I was gonna write a Christmas episode of Go those girls with the podcast yeah, you did. what happened what happened to that I I wrote I wrote like a couple of and then my life just suddenly got insane. Like, I really want to do one next year, well, though. Well, to be fair, right now Heather's moving and Serena said she won't be around until after Christmas. Yeah. I wrote, can I just say, I wrote Serena a villain rap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You have to Does tell her that. It? You have to I, tell her that. Or she'll oh, hear I, it. I can tell her that, right? Not only did I write it, I recorded it for her. I wrote and recorded it. Oh, my God. I right, I won't have anyone saying I wasn't committed to this as an idea. Can we just, okay. all right. <laughs> next week when we do our Christmas episode, we'll just play that at the end of the episode. You need to send that okay, to me. All right, yeah, do it. <laughs> it I'll get it all sorted I'll, out. I'll play it at the end of the episode, no context. No one will understand it unless they watch, unless they listen to this part. Do you want, can I just say, do you want to know what the song was about? Do you want to know what the whole, because Serena was going to be the villain, and her whole villain Wait, don't arc. Tell us, don't tell us, don't tell because we're going to do it next year. Well, she'll, she'll oh, probably write it different next year. Oh. Or something, I don't know. Oh, no, no, because it was a good idea, and I do want to, I think I do want to do it next year. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I'll tell you when we're off there. Okay. Okay. Don't spoil it, yeah. <laughs> Spoilers for our fucking stupid shit. <laughs> Spoilers, <laughs> Tolson comes in in a Captain America suit. Yeah. Oh, yes. Tolson comes in and makes out with everyone. <laughs> Captain you America, first and here. Tolson, yeah. die happy, the end. Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. My mom is finally... this. I'm continuing the saga of my mother and HBO. Um... <laughs> Was that she, a saga? I wasn't aware that yeah, was a saga. Yeah, my mom... My mom watched all of um, Eastbound and Down in one night about a month ago. She watched all of it in one night. And then she started watching True Blood. <laughs> now she's all caught up with True Blood. Um, she, she watched all of it, and then she went back and watched a couple... Like, the first couple seasons, because she forgot a bunch of shit. Great, so, your mom would get on so well with my parents. <laughs> she's like... And now she has, like, this huge crush on Stephen Moyer, who plays one of the main guys on... Well, he is hot. And and she's hot. like, he has that, like, David Duchovny thing about him. And I'm like, of course he does. No, <laughs> he's, he's 
not as hot as David Duchovny was back in the, back in the day. And um, so, and now she, I'm trying to get her to watch Game of Thrones. Right. Okay. Can we all go around and say who right now makes our ovaries explode? I'll go first. Joel McHale. Before you know. said that, my dog literally just walked into my room. <laughs> He's like, did someone call for George's me? dog, that's who, <laughs> that's who does it for me. From my English Rose. Yeah, he's so hot for me, your dog. No, Joel McHale. <laughs> Jack, you whore. Joel, yeah, Joel McHale's pretty great. Joel McHale is... My ovaries explode. Uh, my boyfriend. Aww. Uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you who really makes my ovaries explode, though. Matthew fucking Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely shocked. One day he's gonna come on this show. One day, and then no, and she will die. Do you know what? I secretly think he's terrified of me. <laughs> he's terrified of everybody. He's a nervous person. Well, yeah. What was he like when you met him? Just out of curiosity. Um, just well, out of curiosity. Nice. Who am I kidding? He was really nice. He was kind of shy. Like I, I think that's like the general impression I, I get from some, a lot of them, or some of them that they're like really, they're really like big and bright and on camera and stuff but then like in person they're kind of quiet and i don't know if he was well okay maybe that's not true but he was he was a cool guy just kind of you know shy so I, I'm like, I'm not used to all the, the fans and stuff like that it, was it must be charming. <clears throat> it must be very surreal for people to suddenly be thrust into a world in which they're anonymous and then suddenly they're signing autographs like in all seriousness that must be very very strange it is. It must be. Like, um, my first MAGFest um, was like, my boyfriend at the time and me ran into uh, Lee and Dina. Oh, and yeah. We talked to them a little bit. And, like, like I, I mostly just talked to Dina. And Lee was just kind of, like, really surprised, too. And they were just like, yeah, we're not used to this at all. Just, like, people coming up to us and asking for autographs. And especially Lee. He was just like, it's so weird. Because I'm usually just so, like, quiet. And I don't really talk a lot to people. <laughs> I mean, it really, it really must be odd. I mean, and I think it's probably, it's probably a very, very easy thing to, and like, I'm going to get real here for a second. Like, it is probably a very easy thing to envy, but actually when you're in that situation and you have the pressure of having to impress a lot of people when kind of all you wanted to do is make awesome videos with your friends, that must be weird. Probably really nice in some ways, but and great that you inspire lots of people and they love what you do, but probably a lot of pressure and probably very hard in some ways. <laughs> okay, you know who's really hot? Go on. Idris Elba. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Holy he, shit. He, yeah, he is pretty hot. I'm slowly realizing that he's like the most good-looking black man I've ever seen in my life. No, you know he's gonna be in a Nelson Mandela biopic? Uh-huh. Yeah, that came out. It Surprisingly, is? it came out so close to when Nelson Mandela died. I thought that was oh, kind of no, strange no, that they still went with the, um, no, it came out already, like, recently. But I just saw a trailer for it at the movie theater. Well, maybe it's in and select it's just... theaters right now, I don't know. That's I, so think con- that's, uh, I think what it is, is it was going to be released around now anyway, but obviously given his death, that has given it a publicity boost. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I'd be very, very interested to see it. I hope it's good because, I, I don't know, the last biopic, the last really big biopic that came out was um, Diana, which was supposed to be awful. Yeah, I heard it was, like, the worst thing ever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really, really want to see 12 Years a Slave. I just saw that yesterday, actually. What was it like? Um, it was good. It was really... Not happy. Not, you know. So I saw, I've heard, I mean, I think, you know, that's a horrible idea anyway. Like, I hate things about being people being kidnapped. Like, that's a phobia of mine. It really upsets me. But then you've got all this history. So yeah. It, it was that, good. It was good, but it was like, I don't know. I would have, I would have cut a few things. Like, I don't know. I felt like some stuff went on for a while. And like, I, I've never seen this director's like stuff. But he loves close-ups a lot. Oh, like a lot of a lot of scenes were just you know really close shots of people's faces or just close shots of stuff. And like 
it was kind of effective because like it makes you like right there in the situation it's like really uncomfortable but then other times it was just like I don't know once in a while I just thought of my wide angle lens is about to burst <laughs> <laughs> you know and um it, it was good like I, I shed a tear or two near the end it was it was really touching but like I don't I mean, know it's not it's not something you should take the, for the kids to see <laughs> no 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 I mean I think the general consensus seems to be that like it's just really great that there's a movie that isn't shying away from how kind of horrible it is to be a slave. Like the oh fact yeah, like there's an actual like there's a whipping scene. Well, there's a few of those, but there's like the one that I remember. Like you actually see the injuries. Like you see them be like you know you always when you see like a whipping scene they always show like just the person you know up front showing their re- pain reactions on their faces while they you know whip them. But this like they show that and you see them like the mark being made on her back and I was like oh my god like wow I mean I and I think that is pretty intense (laughs) yeah and it's important that is important I mean I I'm excited to see it actually like the what's his name Chiwet's I can't pronounce his name to save my life so I'm not even gonna try (laughs) no me neither the lead of the movie (laughs) (laughs) the lead of the movie is um he's a British actor and it's just oh yeah He's really yeah, good. Oh my god, she was amazing. It's nice to see, like it's I I just like it when British actors get jobs in big Hollywood films and they're brilliant. Like that's just nice. Yeah, he was he was amazing. Like I I would not be surprised if that movie wins some kind of Oscar because that's like you know mm-hmm. really intense stuff and probably for acting because like everybody gave a good performance. Even the characters that were totally unnecessary, everyone gave good performances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Benedict Cucumber Patch is in it, isn't he? Cucumber yeah. Patch, yeah. Yeah, he's the first owner of the, the first slave owner of that guy. He's, and apparently, like, like, he's like the good owner, you know? <laughs> well, uh, like, yeah, like as good as. I mean, it's in. That to me is an interesting character because he's sort of like. I gather that the character in real life thought he was kind of benign and altruistic, and there's something quite disturbing about a slave owner that feels like they're a good, kind slave over, owner. Like, that's yeah. quite a weird concept. Um, it is weird. I'm quite interested to see that character. He's he's not um, in a lot of it. Like, it more focuses on his second owner, of, who's Michael Fassbender, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Know, he's, like, in Don't get too, you know, Greer, don't get too sad when his scenes are over. No, Michael Fassbender, yeah. No, uh, my, Bandic, uh Cucumber Patch. Oh, Cucumber I like that Patch, name. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm completely in but love. It's with weird to hear him with a southern accent too. Is he good? Is it a good accent? Oh, it is, but it's just you know, it's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, so many British actors being awesome. <laughs> have you guys yeah, heard? Guess, uh, right. Have you guys none of y'all seen The Hobbit yet or anything? I'm no. Hobbit to see that with my boyfriend because if I see that without him, he'd probably get really pissed. He's a huge like Tolkien fan. Uh... So. Um, it got five stars um, in Empire, which is a British film magazine. I hear the uh, 3D for it is awful, though. Really? Oh, that sucks. Huh. Uh, by I, the way, <laughs> I, I, remember I remember how the last podcast I'd only seen Frozen once? How many times? I've uh, seen it two more times since then. You have a problem. Really, like, I completely understand. I saw... This is, like, my secret shame. Like... I used to, my first big boy crush was Seth Green, and I saw... Oh, I used to have such a crush on him, too. <laughs> ah! Uh, and people would I make s- fun of me because they'd be like, he's such a midget, and I'm like, I don't care, I'm short, I, too. <laughs> I didn't give a shit, he was so cute, and I loved him as an actor. Have you seen that video of him on, on Conan a couple months ago, where, um... He put no. he brought some googly eyes, and he put googly eyes on a bunch of stuff, and then he put googly eyes on him and Conan... <laughs> like over their that's, eyes. <laughs> that's incredible. It's that's really awesome. funny. Because awesome. he says that's how he makes himself feel better is he just puts googly eyes on things. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> like it's a pretty good way to feel better, to be honest. Agreed. I, mean, I I do things like I I I know that feel. Like if I want to cheer up, I'll do like stupid poses in the mirror. Like it's essentially that. Like. You cheer yourself up by being ridiculous on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, what were you saying about Seth Green? Oh, yeah. I saw Goldmember at the cinema five times. <laughs> awesome. Wow. And I used to watch The Spy Who Shagged Me 
every morning before I went to school. I would wake up an hour off before I had to go to school to watch the Spider Man. I love you. I used to, me and my little friend Sarah did the same thing. We would like quote that to that those movies to each other on the bus. Oh my god! All the time. I have never met anyone else that had that. (laughs) Really? Oh my god. That's awesome. Like I know that movie. Like I know the rap. Um, to just the two of us. That oh, Doctor- yeah. It's been so like, long since I've watched those movies. Ugh. I probably, I don't remember all the words now, but I, I think I used to know most of them then. But. I have, I, I have a DVD, and it's all three of the movies on one DVD. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah. I really hope the fourth one gets made. Like, they, there's been talk about it, but, like, I don't know if it'll ever happen. Well, like, Seth Green gets nothing on Family Guy anymore, so it would be great to have him back, because at the end of the last Austin Powers film, he was the villain, so I do Yeah, love- that's what I'm hoping for. If they make a fourth one, I want him to be the bad guy, because that would be perfect. That would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, so I saw Frozen three times. Uh, that's incredible. So it, I one, tw- uh, it. twice in 2D, and then once in 3D. But you know, what I love about Josh Gad is that he plays like, and this isn't a criticism, he plays the same character in everything because he is so good at it. Uh-huh. Like the character that he plays in Frozen is essentially the character that he played in the Book of Mormon as a snowman. <laughs> the character that he played in 1600 Pen is essentially the character that he played in Frozen as the son of the president, like... But as well, snowman. a lot of actors, a lot of actors do that. They're kind of typecast, or that, that, that's just what they're better at doing. Like, not... This is a sad thing. Not a lot of actors are versatile. Yeah. Or they are, and they're not given enough material I mean, to be that isn't being given the opportunity, but... Which is a shame, actually, for him as an actor, but he is so good at that character. Yeah. He's really just, fucking funny in Frozen. Really fucking funny. That picture you've got, Greer, as your cover photo on um, your Facebook page. For those of you that don't know, Greer's cover photo. I'll put it up right here. It's... Oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm just going to go to your Facebook page. It's a picture. <laughs> he looks so pissed off. Yeah, or just disgusting. Judgmental. <laughs> that's another thing. The animation in Frozen just looks gorgeous. It's, and that's why I say 3D is like the only way you should see that movie. It is gorgeous. It is the best 3D I have seen in a very long time. I can imagine Let It Go in 3D with all Holy the snow. Holy shit. In the ice around. castle and it's just... Wow. Yeah, I can imagine it's mind My brain like... was all over the floor. <laughs> My brain! <laughs> no, I mean, Frozen just seems like a great Christmas movie. It's, um, actually... fuck it. it's a good anytime movie. It's... <laughs> We saw, um, oh no, actually, I was going to say as well, like, a lot of people think Frozen is going to be, in terms of it just standing the test of time, like, the next kind of Disney renaissance, the beginning of the next Mm -hmm. Disney renaissance, and I really hope it does, I hope it stands the test of time, the way things like The Lion King and The Little Mermaid have. It's so good. Well, if if Greer keeps praising its goodness, and it might, she will spread the gospel of Frozen. It's so good. I will. I'll start the Church of Frozen. It's (laughs) so good. It's so weird, because this is like... Praise be St. Olaf of the It's almost like my second favorite new new Disney movie now, and it's so weird, because my top two were both about sisters, because Frozen about sisters, and my favorite Disney film is Lilo and Stitch, and that's about sisters as well. I've never seen oh. Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch is amazing. Lilo and I Stitch. Saw that, I think I saw that when it came out. It's been a really Lilo long and time. Stitch. I cry every fucking time. Just the start of the third <laughs> act in Lilo and Stitch is the saddest thing ever put on fucking cinema. It's... I I love like it's kind of it's one of the downsides of the internet is that you get like you very quickly discover really great moments from things before you've seen oh. them. And like really when famous. When you come here, we'll watch Leland Stitch. I have it on like a two disc DVD. Yeah. It's funny you say that, um, Fran, because I keep seeing this, uh, picture from frozen of like, I don't know, one of them is frozen solid and like the witch is hugging her. So I'm assuming that's from like an important part. So I'm just thinking, yeah. Oh, oh spoiler, yeah, spoiler, spoiler. Yeah, yeah. Don't spoil that. It's, yeah, exactly. I mean, well, it's like, there's a lot, yeah, I mean, that's completely what I'm talking about, Georgia. And there's a line from Lilo and Stitch, um, spoilers for those of you that haven't seen it. Um, oh, yeah, spoilers. Even though you said you haven't seen it. 
but well, but no, this is this is precisely the point I'm making, Greer. Like the internet um, can ruin things for you. Mm-hmm. I I discovered this line just through it being so popular. The this is my family line. It's little and broken, um, but still good. Like yes, that is a, still a beautiful good. bit of writing, and I totally got it spoiled for me. Yeah, this is my family. Yeah. Oh, and broken, but still good. That's how I feel about you guys. Oh, Aww. well, Hana means family. Family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. That's a line. Oh, oh. it's all about There's family. Both. It's like, oh my god, both. it's the best movie. Oh my god, why is it so underrated? You know, like in terms of the movies that came that kind of came out post Disney Renaissance, like. I I really I know it's nuts. I know it's um I know it's mad, but I really like Hercules. It's Hercules such a is stuff. great. I don't know why people give it so much shit. I mean, like, it's a really like it's a it's a stupid movie just in terms of nothing makes any sense. But it is it's just the songs are fantastic. The animation is beautiful. The voice cast is wonderful. Like I I love it. I gave Hercules okay. so I much unnecessary something. shit. I love that's a good movie. I want to say guys, thank you. <laughs> um, two things. One, I love how you say Renaissance. Fran. Renaissance and Renaissance. <laughs> I love that. Two, Hercules is, is probably a stupid movie. I mean, I like it, but I think it's stupid because if they went by the source material, it would be X-rated. Yeah. So oh, they probably yes. figured, we can't get away with what it really is, so let's just make shit up. mythology is terrible. Honestly, Greek mythology is batshit crazy, and I love it. Yeah, I mean, like... If, you know, animals can fuck people and still make human babies. Yeah. Or, like, gods can fuck their cousins and nothing bad happens. Mm-hmm. It's, like, insanity. But it's I mean, great. I, I just think Hercules seems like... I mean, what Doug said about it is really kind of, like, on the on the money. Like, it just seems like they threw a lot of different themes and saw at it and kind of saw what stick, like, stuck. Um, it probably did, but I... I like it. I don't care what anyone says. I know. Yeah, I I love it. Like I might watch it tonight. In fact, I used like, to have like a Hercules coloring book when I was little. I still. I, still, uh, I don't. I probably I don't have it anymore. But like I I love that stuff. I was I think when I was a kid I was Megara one year for Halloween. Oh, uh, nice. my best Halloween costume ever was um. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Um, Bugsy Malone. That was a good year. Uh, <laughs> Naboo from the Mighty Boosh, uh, also a good year. My best Halloween costume ever was Girl with Axe in Head. <laughs> which was, was when, I was about, when I was about 10, right, I, I, I bought a plastic axe from a, just a store of some kind. And I cut like a, a kind of half hole out of the side of it. And then I kind of I made this mechanism with the help of, I think, my mum to attach it to my head, and we got loads of fake blood. It looked amazing. I wish I had a picture of it. Yeah, it I ever, the best I, have I ever possible. told? Awesome. Have I ever told the story on here? I forgot if I've told the story on here. Have Have I ever told the story of my my brother? And one year when he was a kid, he went as to Halloween as a can of lima beans. That's amazing. That's, that's basically incredible. the whole story. He went he went trick or treating as a can of lima that's, beans. <laughs> That's so random. He like one year he was a Power Ranger, and then the next year he's like, "I'm you can lima beans," and he doesn't even like lima beans. And we're like, "Fine." <laughs> I wish Rose was here for that story. She'd appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Rose. She actually awesome. knows my brother. <laughs> Where is she? She yeah, is, she's home right now. I could, but she's been like super busy for with something. So. <laughs> do you like how how near do you live, Georgia, to these guys? Not even close. They're in the south, and I'm up north. So. Oh right, okay. It's take a when, while to go see them. When you say up north, Georgia, I instantly think of up north in the UK, which like, uh, well, like. Yeah, Fran, I'm right across the street from you. Haven't you ever noticed? <laughs> <laughs> My dog's barking all the time. You didn't hear? <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. Yeah. The north, the north of England is like the the most like. Uh, I, it's it's like Manchester, Liverpool, Newcastle, so like incredibly thick accents, really, really working class, really like tough existence, you know, just 
like just com- the complete opposite of the way people talk about the north of america like the polar opposite i just think that's kind of interesting yeah because like over there it's oh, like no. well i mean there's strong accents in the north here like a brooklyn or a jersey you know oh yeah or you know new england new england you know. accent that's a whole section yeah. etiquette new york is funny because there's like it's 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 such an interesting place because like there's so there's like i don't know it seems for me it seems to be the only state that has several accents even though it's just one state Mm -hmm. because like there's long island and then there's also like you know upstate then there's also manhattan and then there's like brooklyn and then every single like sub like like queens and harlem and yeah, like, every every borough has its own accent. It's just really fascinating to me. Like, my dad, born and raised in the Bronx, still has some of his Bronxisms, you know? <laughs> but it's just, it's so fascinating. I mean, great, I mean, Fran, are there any, um, like, towns or boroughs where it's, like, where it's all in the same place, but just, like, different parts of it have different accents? Yeah, certainly. Um, it, um... Sorry, I nearly sneezed. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, everywhere in England really, like, has its own accent. Like, well, for instance, in Devon, like, that's the southwest. But there are, within Devon, millions of different, like, subtle differences, um, depending on where you go. Um, and, yeah, the same in London. Like, a Croydon accent is completely different to um, a an Essex accent and that's completely different to kind of a standard um London accent like yeah and the same and the same with up north like you know to the naked ear um so if you weren't I like that the naked ear (laughs) ear, uh that could be I I, I'm gonna write that as an erotic novella Jesus oh my oh my but um yeah like so the north of England, like a Mancunian accent, a Liverpudlian accent, they might all sound similar if you were American, but they're completely different if you know them well. Um, well so I, yeah, I, I do know Liverpool because of the Beatles. That's about uh, it, really. Yeah, I don't really know the differences. In, like I like obviously you sound different from someone like um like uh, I'm trying to think like somebody really posh. Like, I, like someone I, on Downton I, Abbey. Fran, obviously you sound different from the people who are on Downton Abbey. But that know. is the extent of your knowledge. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, I mean, you sound completely different from someone like Carl Pilkington, who's from Manchester. Yeah, I mean, my I've, I've got quite, like, I mean, it's interesting, actually, because I did spend a year in America. So to English people, I have a slight, slight, slight American twin. And, I mean, obviously you sound different from, like, Dick Van Dyke, who caught me accent, you know. So. Well, that's whole whoa, 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 back the truck up. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke did not have anything even approximate. <laughs> yeah, Greer, you just crossed the line. <laughs> but uh, Fran, to save to save Greer from that, I sort of do know <laughs> some. <laughs> I know some differences in accents. Like, I mean, I'm you know I'm not an expert, but like I I know the difference between like Cockney and like the really posh London and the Liverpool, like, that's, I think that's the extent of my British knowledge, but I, I, there is, I do know the little, some differences, so. I mean, yeah, well, so, so, like, for instance, like, a, a Birmingham accent, for instance, that would be, like, John Oliver from The Daily Show, um, uh, a Mancunian accent would be, um, uh, Carl Pilkington, um, a Devonshire accent would be Sam from Lord of the Rings, um, that, I mean, that, those oh, are, wow. those are, they're very Mr. Gentle. Frodo. Oh, Mr. Frodo, can I play? Oh my God, I have to tell you this story. When I went to Glastonbury um, and they played the Goonies, um, it was awesome actually. Like it was up on the big screen and it was pouring down with rain. It was amazing. Um, but as soon as Sean Astin came on, the amount of just the barrage of just gay jokes about him like oh. being in love with Mr. Frodo, like you're not gay. Like, <laughs> Stop that! Like, has no one ever heard of like two guys being really good friends? I know, right? Is what? That such a crime? I know, and it's it's this it's this idea that there is something inherently gay about close male friendship. Like, that's terrible. That's terrible that men can't be close friends without being gay. Like, no, and even if they are, like, even if they the characters were supposed to be gay, who cares? Mm. Yeah, oh, who's the deal? Like, don't don't be offended by it, but don't assume it either. Just they either are or they aren't, you know. And that pissed me off so much. Like, like to me, I, that I think, be- like, actually, oh my god, 
when I saw The Return of the King, I think I heard a gay joke in the audience. Like, during one of the times I saw it, and I was just like, you animal. <laughs> I'm like, and it's like, it's like the climatic part where they're like, they threw the ring in, and they're lying on that volcano, and you know, before the birds come in and save them. Mm-hmm. And so then I think I heard a gay joke, and I'm just like, you ass. You should have yeah. turned around and be like, go suck a cock. I should have, <laughs> but I did <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of think, like, it, it made me, it made me laugh at Glastonbury, because it was like 3 a.m. and we were pouring it was pouring down with rain we were all soaked and like we were deliriously drunk and everything seemed funny (laughs) I mean in all in all seriousness like yes of course you're right like they they can be close friends without being gay there's nothing wrong with the fact that they are gay or that they might be gay rather what is wrong is that being funny to people Mm-hmm. I also heard that gay stuff with um, Mary and Pippin, too. I heard that, too. And I'm just like, again, it's like, who gives a shit, you know? Just stop, you know? Guys are allowed to have guy friends, like, close guy actually, friends. It's is... not that big a deal. I think you that's know? funny. If that, if, that, if, that, if that makes you laugh, and you have no friends, clearly. <laughs> I think, actually, what was funnier to me, um, in hindsight, was the fact that Sean Astin was so like, nope, they're not gay, and like took it really seriously, whereas like Elijah Wood was just like, yeah, they might be, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I didn't know they asked them. Yeah, they did. There was a lot at the time um, going around when it was first released. Um, actually, um, I think uh, the Nostalgia Chick, when she did, um, I think she did like a retrospective on the Lord of the Rings films, and she had Ron Tasmo on talking about the kind of gay, potential gay subtext, subtext with those characters. And I think, yeah, it was just like, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Who gives a shit? Oh, my. <laughs> um, speaking of potential gay subtext, um, I, I've i just been kind of wandering around on online while we've been talking. And I found, uh, for those who are listening, I found there's this website called like VintageEveryday.com where it's just all old school photos of various things. And it's really fascinating. And I just happened to find this, Disturbing Fashions of the 70s. And so far, it's a lot of male fashion. Oh, that's not surprising. Ugly, kind of gay male fashion. Yeah, that's fact, not surprising them, at all, really. I they're nude. Right, so. let's see this. Oh my god, they all look like they're an Anchorman. <laughs> it's really... Yeah, it, this it's is... Very, so yeah, weird. bell-bottoms, bright shirts. I you know like one of the ads. They're great. all dude. You know what's... They're all dude except wearing sunglasses and like knee high socks. I just love how seriously they're taking it. Like the poses. Like I have to say, like thinking about the poses on some of the Anchorman posters now, like they have that look down. Yeah. Yeah, they're posing this and thinking like, yeah, this is this will totally be popular still in forty years. <laughs> <laughs> All of some, of, some of them are kind of, I love this here, kicking jeans. I know, the kicking jeans is like literally a guy kicking another guy in the ball. Oh my god. In the, with the jeans on. Oh my god, it is, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, you know what, in his defense, the guy he's kicking has an ugly fro, so he deserves it. Oh my god, this naked one. Yeah, it's hilarious. Holy shit, dude. Put it in the link dump for a uh, career. It'll be funny. I, yes, I, I will. I'll post that as well. I want to I wanna post the jeans one, too, because that's way too funny. Um, Guys, I'm going to have to go, I'm afraid. Oh, right when we start looking at naked guys. I know. <laughs> I, well, I, I mean, I'm funny enough, that's why I have to go, because I have to go and look at naked one guys. Of those guys looks like, <laughs> one of those guys looks like Louis C.K. I know. Yeah. By the top in the blue. <laughs> He's like this huge nose. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, that guy. Oh my god, that is Matthew McConaughey. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my god. What is this suddenly? Matthew McConaughey's now a legitimate actor. How awesome is that? Yeah. Like he's he's just started doing really decent movies and getting like actual acclaim for his performances. And it's like, where the fuck did that come from? Maybe he was just tired of being not taken seriously. And if yeah, yeah, I, I liked him, him. I liked him in Magic Mike. He was good in Magic. I like uh, Girl Ghost of Girlfriend's Cats. I don't care what anyone says. That was a funny movie. Um, I know what you, it's one of those things. It's a bit like the show Mike and Molly. I kind of it's a guilty pleasure. Uh huh. Yeah, I really liked it. 
I yeah. Oh my I'll, god! I mean, it was, it was in that Lincoln Lawyer movie a couple of years ago, and appar- apparently that yeah. God, what movie? I want to see Killer Joe. Huh? I want to see uh, Killer Joe. Oh yeah, huh? I've heard that's awesome. I I want to. God, what is that fucking um? Oh my god. I'm sorry, I'm still looking at those pictures. Dallas, Dallas Buyers Club, that's what I want to see. And Mud, I heard Mud is really good. I heard Mud was good, too. Change of subject, I noticed also on Facebook, that guy who made all those predictions about the world ending, he died. Oh my god, really? <laughs> ah! That's hilarious. I'm sorry, no offense to his family, but that's hilarious. <laughs> ah, they can take it. They're probably getting that joke already a hundred times. <laughs> Almost certainly. I mean, for fuck's sake, though, what a moron. I know. I re- I remember at my my college, we would only we would get like a certain amount of channels, and there was just this one channel. I swear to God, twenty four seven, it was just him. And I'm like, who is this old guy that looks like like this ancient skeletal man who looks like Spock's grandfather? And why does he have his own channel twenty four seven? Oh God, that sounds. And he would, cool. Like I would never watch it, but I would like flip channels, and he was always sitting on his couch just talking about shit, looking at the camera. And I'm just like, who are you? Like, Jesus, that sounds terrible. It sounds so, like, how did he get his own show for, like, 24-7? Like, I, I'm kind of jealous. I mean, that, that, like, I do feel like if you're religious, you're guaranteed... If you're, if you're a religious zealot, you are guaranteed to get a TV show. Well, yeah, but, you know, that doesn't make it good. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. I mean... But they, it's like that awful puppet show, um, the um, Junior Christian Education Hour or something like that, which is Ugh. the most terrifying thing I've seen in my life. I mean, the puppets looked like they were found in a pedophile's dustbin. <laughs> Ew. Wow. I haven't heard of that show. That sounds pretty nuts. <laughs> look, it up on, um, look it up on YouTube. I mean, my description of it doesn't do how mad it is justice. <laughs> can I can I just do I have to say one more like crazy fucking thing that I am finding right now. So okay. um Tom Hiddleston is doing a uh, theater in London right now. He's doing how do I pronounce it? Fucking Coralinus? Coralinus, yeah. I know. And I heard he gets like a, a nude shower scene or something. Oh yes. And <laughs> I broke Fran. <laughs> I need That's to see a broken this. noise. I don't know where he's doing it in. Um, in London. Probably at, uh, oh, fuck, the Olivier Theater or something, if I had to guess. Because that's where all the prestigious stuff happens. I've been there. But anyway, so there's, like, some fan pages I follow is, like, posting some pictures from it. And, like, uh, the the main character that Tom plays, he dies at the end. And people are like... <gasps> well, it's Shakespeare. People are like, <gasps> spoilers! And I'm like... This play was written in the 1600s. I'm pretty <laughs> sure spoilers stopped at about like 1630. <laughs> spoilers, Romeo and Juliet don't get married. Yeah, they both they both they, die. Sorry, no, they get married. They, they die too. Like I think. Oh, do they? Do they This was written in like they get 1600s. married and then they. Have you actually, read the story, Fran? You're British. You should know Shakespeare. They get married, and then he gets married. They get married, then he gets banished, and then they decide to kill each other and stuff. But I, I have completely just disproved Greer's point inadvertently because I don't. Cle- I clearly don't know the ending of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's at, Fran, if you've ever heard of it, it's at the Donmar Warehouse. That's where he's performing at. Ah, oh, the Donmar Warehouse. I love the Donmar Warehouse. Have That's you awesome. been there? Take me with you. It's at Covent Garden, have, apparently. But Let's all go and see Tom Hiddleston in the, I mean, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Let's all go and see Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah apparently it's there. So until awesome. until February 8th. I really, really want to see um, Matt Smith in the American Psycho musical. That's the next thing I'm going to try and see. I just want to see the American Psycho musical because it sounds batshit awesome, fun, crazy. It really does. Have you read the book? The book is fucking... No, I just saw the movie, but just the fact that it's a musical just sounds so real. How amazing is that? How perfect. Well, I I don't know. I never... I don't know if it's perfect, but it's definitely I, I See, I think we, I think it weirdly is, because he talks about music throughout the entirety of the book. Like, there are a few chapters that are just dedicated to him talking about his favourite bands. But and it's just, 
is the music in this like original music or is it the music that he talks about? Like, is there a, oh, no, a no, no, Huey, no. And the, Huey Lewis in the News musical number? That would be perfect. I think, okay. a, I think there's a bit of the stuff that he talks about. Mostly, I think it's original music, but it's such a it's such a kind of weirdly theatrical book. It's so over the top. Like, well, yeah. I, and and like almost almost like you wonder whether it could be a fantasy of this character's like yeah I, that's, you know, oh spoilers by the way but yeah you never you never know and it's yeah, so I, weird but i would i would love to definitely i would totally go see it it's sound I, you'll crazy. probably be able to find a few bootlegs online soon enough yeah or maybe it'll come to the stage but with somebody else that Who would knows? be and if it did that i mean hopefully it'll be big because it the thing is it's only a fringe production but hopefully it'll go west end I I bet. Well, it's got Matt Smith in it. It's gonna get big, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty. You and your Doctor Who over there and here. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> guys, I am gonna have to go now. I'm afraid. Okay. Here I for found real. a website so you can buy tickets for Coriolanus. <laughs> the Doctor. Here with you. We can all squeal like little idiots. Here. <laughs> ah, Tom Hiddleston's penis. <laughs> Oh my uh, god. Hold on, I'm trying to post it to you. <laughs> they say he has a nude scene in The Only Love is Left Alive, and they show it for like a split second. He's skinny. He is really, I think he got skinny for that movie. I don't like skinny, because it looks kind of creepy. Well, I think he got skinny for that movie. I don't think he looks like that all the time, but. Good. I know he, had to, he had to buff up a lot for that for that Shakespeare thing that he's doing. Right oh, so. oh. <laughs> Fran, you have to go. Fran, you have to go and take pictures. Okay. <laughs> do it, do it for well, the podcast. I posted you the link. You have. Do you know where that place is? Uh, the Donmar Warehouse. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, what I will do well, is me, I will. I cannot believe that you are in the same town that Tom Hiddleston is in, and you have had no idea. <laughs> Well, she I know, but, but, but to be honest, I mean, England is like the size of your bedroom. Like, <laughs> uh, it's not a big deal to me. <laughs> I am excited about seeing him in Coriolan- Coriolanus. Coriolanus, I think it's pronounced. Coriolanus. I'm excited. Coraline. Cor, I'm excited. About I just thought that was Coriolanus. ridiculous. We were like oh, spoilers, and I'm like, it's 500 years old. <laughs> no, I know, I know. That's ridiculous. Incredibly funny, but ridiculous. Yeah. Um, uh, the Christmas episode, um, we need to announce that, um... It'll be next, we'll do it next week, we'll be here for Christmas, I guess. I don't know if we're gonna do anything special, but... I don't, I can't, I mean, I'm gonna try and be here, but I can't guarantee, because I never know my work schedule, <laughs> but I'll try and be here. Well, I, I'm on annual leave from the 20th until the 28th. Um, I can do, I can do Christmas Eve. Maybe. If, if uh, you... No, I'm not going to be around. Um, I'm going to be with family and. Uh... Oh, play. Um, well, I can do. I can do Boxing Day. Well, <laughs> what the? F- oh, that's the day after Christmas, right? Yeah. I, do you, sorry, I don't that... think I'll be around for that either. I'll be coming home. Boxing Day. Uh, is that in America? We'll boxing figure day? it out. No, not really. I know it's big in Canada. I think. Oh yeah. We'll get people. It's okay. We'll have a special Christmas shit and be fun and then. Oh, well, and apparently my friend who, um... Special Christmas shit. Oh, I changed back to an earlier topic. My friend who, uh, didn't know about that character dying and once upon a time has apparently just found out. Oh! Oh, uh, <laughs> she's devastated. It's not, yeah, it seems like All it. Alright, he George's friend. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh. Uh. Well, I'm, I'm sending her my condolences. <laughs> oh, good job. Good job. All right. Uh, well, thank you for listening. We, we had an extra long one this time, so hopefully that makes up for the fact that we have had an inconsistent ass schedule. <laughs> but it was a lo- it was a lovely show today. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and um, <laughs> lovely speaking to you both again, as always. <laughs> and, Me too. Uh, and I can't wait for uh, Greer to show those pictures of all those crazy '70s men yes. on the podcast. Be awesome. I can't wait for people to see that. I'm as excited. Please show that guy in the onesie too, because that is fucking. Terrifying. Do. <laughs> I really can't wait to see Tom Hiddleston's penis. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, good. Oh. Tom Hiddleston's penis. Bye. Bye, everyone. Oh. Oh, oh.